Hi, my name is Paul Tranny, Flash Platform Evangelist for Adobe. And one of the things I absolutely love about Flash is how it maintains the integrity of my design. And I'm specifically talking about fonts in this case and embedding fonts. So let's go ahead and take a look uh, at the design I currently have set up in Flash. I'm just viewing this SWF file. And again, I want to maintain the integrity of this design uh, regardless of where it's playing. So again, for multiple screens, regardless of the screen size, and I want to make sure the font is appropriate and uh, appears exactly how I specify in Flash. Uh, but some cool features going on uh, with this file. I do have uh, this little slider, which will change it from one column to two columns to three columns. And again, that's nice. But even before I even get to that point, I want to even make I want to make sure that this font uh, actually comes through. Okay, so that's my Bauhaus font. So that's what I'm going to focus on. And then I'm going to go ahead and touch on these uh, text fields down here as well. So let's take a look at my file a little closer. All right, so here's my text, and I'll just select it. And notice how it says in my properties panel, classic text. OK, so I have this set to classic text. It's not TLF text. And it's static, of course. So I want to make sure my, uh, my text is static in this case, because I don't want the user to necessarily change it. Uh, that's just not its purpose. Uh, but if I take a look a little closer, notice that it uses this Bauhaus 93. And not only that, the anti-alias is set for animation. Okay, and what happens is it will automatically, Flash will automatically embed all of the characters of this font if I have it set to uh, anything else other than device fonts. So just keep that in mind, uh, and often that is the default. Uh, but in general, it's going to maintain the integrity of that font uh, regardless of what screen it appears on. Uh, so again, anti-alias for animation is how that's set up. Everything's going to be good. Let's go ahead and take a look at my sort of this these text fields down here. The base of my page, I have this text box right here. I'll select it, and this is TLF text, okay? And it's also editable. So this is where things get a little more tricky because I want the user to be able to type in their first name and their last name, and I want to keep that certain font that is consistent with my design. So if I select this text box, notice how, again, it's Bauhaus 93, and I'm using device fonts, OK? So if I'm using device fonts, in fact, if I change it to animation, it even asks me if I want to embed fonts. And ultimately, this is what I want to do, is I want to embed that font so it's available to the user. I'll click Embed. Now what I can do is it actually selects the font that I currently have selected in Flash, and I can give it a specific name if I want to. Here again, it's the pretty much the same name as the font itself. And then I can prioritize what I want embedded. Now I could uh, select all, and that will, of course, embed the entire font. Uh, it's quite a bit. In fact, for this one, you know, it's almost 100,000 different characters. I don't really need that because they're just entering in their first name. So I can narrow that down to just uppercase and lowercase. OK, so that's what I'm going to do. Just select those two uh, check boxes there. And notice how it's only going to embed 53 characters. And I'll click OK. Let's take a look at the last name text field. I'll select it. And again, it's using device fonts. Another way to get that to that same dialog box is I can click Embed, that Embed button. Notice how it opens up this font embedding uh, menu and gives me uh, anything that I might want to add to it. Uh, so in this case, I might take into consideration maybe a hyphenated last name. Uh, so under also include these characters, I could just put like a dash. Okay, so uh, I want to account for every scenario. In this case, I'll just put it put a dash in there, and now it's 54 characters. Uh, but again, instead of 100,000, it's now down to 54. What that means is my font, or excuse me, my fonts. Those fonts are going to be embedded, but the uh, the size of my SWF is going to be a lot smaller as well. So the user is actually going to see it a lot quicker uh, if they're going to be downloading it or viewing it over the web. 
All right, so those two are set up, and I'd say that's looking pretty good. I can also take a look at uh, some of these other properties available uh, for TLF text. So I, I really encourage you to uh, check out all of the different options because it's, it's, it's really amazing the flexibility you have with text uh, in Flash. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, another sort of common case that you need to account for, and that's uh, if you're entering in, say, a password. So I'm going to select that text box, and I'll just kind of close up these character and advanced character tabs. Uh, notice paragraph is down here. Um, my columns that I was manipulating dynamically is under container and flow. But right down here, you'll also notice under behavior, you can change the behavior of that text field. Uh, so again, uh, I don't want it to be, um, I don't want what the user enters in there to be seen, so I want to change that to password. Now, when the user types in something in here, regardless of what they type in, you can see that it generates these stars, so the password is hidden. Okay, and in that case, I don't need to even worry about sort of embedding any text, but I can always do that again right up in here. If I click embed, I can embed anything I want. So uh, overall, I'd say this looks pretty good. Uh, I also want to point out the Action Script panel because I can actually make a font available for Action Script, and therefore I can share that font uh, amongst maybe multiple areas for any sort of uh, rich internet application. So that's available as well, and not only for classic, but for TLF text as well. But really it's nice that you can control everything in this font embedding uh, dialog box. And uh, notice how I did check those boxes, so I got to make sure I uncheck those and I can go back to my options. Uh, but again, it all comes down to uh, maintaining the integrity of your design while keeping the size small. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a test movie. And Again, my text looks great. I can enter in my first name. You can see how it maintains uh, that font, last name, and then password, just like that. And I can click Enter. The last thing I'm going to show you is in my Publish settings, I can go to Flash and Generate Size Report. Uh, so from here, if I click Publish, it's going to generate a size report, and it's going to actually print that out in my output panel is what it will do. So let's just run this really fast. I just did a uh, command enter or control enter if you're on a PC. And if I scroll up, you can see that it shows me everything in this SWF, including the fonts. So sort of at, as a last check, you might consider checking out uh, these different fonts and what's being embedded. And you can see we have Bauhaus being uh, added in there, and there's actually two different um, references to it. So I just need to make sure everything looks good in here. Bauhaus is set up, and again, that's what it's, is being published out. So that is embedding fonts in Flash Professional CS5. Again, really powerful, flexible, because it maintains the integrity of my design. Uh, so definitely I encourage you to check out more information on Adobe's Developer Connection. Thanks for watching.